Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to our channel. This channel is run by two sisters, so I'm going to be your host today, Star. And oh boy, October is coming to a close and we haven't been making videos for our Art of Halloween series we've done for two years now. If you don't know, Art of Halloween is the name of the series of videos we make across this art channel of ours and our commentary review channel, Jen Star, link down below if you're interested. So in 2021, we did 12 videos total between each other across both channels in 2022. Uh, right yeah in 2022 we did eight and then now we're in 2023 and we did zero junior year of college is so hard and i just literally have like no time to be doing anything even if i desperately want to so with that said let's get into this video so on tiktok there are so many oc challenges and i always wanted to do one and the usual way i've seen these challenges be like portrayed in videos is if you have a certain aspect in your life then you have like then you have to draw something that equates to that like your birth month might influence the gender of your character and maybe the type of season you like might equate to something else that you have to draw and but there are some other ways to do oc challenges challenges besides like if you have this then draw this and so the one that i'll be doing in today's video is is called a pause challenge so you have a lot of images flashing on the screen in a certain category like eyes hair accessories things like that and then you have to pause the video or screenshot randomly and draw what they like what they what you landed on essentially so i thought um i wanted to do the pause version of this so i'll play the tiktok that i used to design this character that we're going to see um really soon and then we'll jump into what i drew Okay, so let's get into the drawing. I'll put pictures of what I screen like what I screenshot on the screen so you know what I have to like make sure that I included. Um I honestly just looked at this, like the screenshots. I remember looking at it at like at like a first glance or like after the first time that I looked at it. I never looked at my my screenshots again. I just drew. So as I'm scripting this and now recording this beginning part of the video, I actually don't know if I even included everything that I was supposed to include in the drawing. I feel like I did, but you know, maybe I didn't. Regardless, the art is complete, so it doesn't even matter at this point. <laughs> so I don't know. Let's just let's just move on from that. Um, we're starting the footage like well into the sketching portion. When I originally started this video back in the end of July, I, I think I think yeah yeah maybe i think the end of july i had just gotten a new laptop after my last one stopped working on me for like a year and a half i've been trying to make that laptop work and it just did not do that anymore and so i switched over my clip studio paint from the from one of our desktops in our house that i was temporarily temporarily using so i forgot to save like all my settings i just assumed that the record time lapse setting would would automatically be on like so i forgot to save the setting to record the time lapse and so yeah well you know the beginning part is gone um but essentially i just used a 3d model to start off this piece for the character and honestly i kind of regret it because i really do hate how the lower half looks like um i don't know if it's the 3d model itself or if i i can't remember because i do this back in july and then i just finished the piece a couple of days ago um, but I don't know, like I said, I don't, know if, I don't know if it's a 3D model itself or if it's something that I did to like mess with it. But the bottom half just looks really weird to me. I've drawn characters squatting before. And so I haven't like referenced my own art to just kind of see like how I can fix this. I just, yeah, I just don't like it. And I wish I ended up doing it myself or really looking at the model or looking at like my drawing when it was still in the sketching phase to kind of fix what I feel like it looks weird to me anyways I I just I just really want to crop the piece and not show the whole bottom half um and plus at the you'll see at the end um there's literally nothing going on in the bottom half besides like the characters like bottom half so I don't 
I don't know, I feel like I can just crop it and I don't really care. Um, but anyways, from here on out, I'll just kind of talk like myself without the script about the piece, the drawing process, and the little backstory that I gave for this character. So yeah, let me just continue here. Okay, so let me talk about my process, or I guess like not really, because I feel like if you've been around on the channel or you've seen like videos that I've done as star on this channel, then I feel like I say the same thing over and over again. So I won't talk about my process per se, but I will say this. When I worked on this piece, I did it in Clip Studio Paint because back in the summer, I was working on my webcomic stuff and like pre-production or whatever, my webcomic um, that I had put on pause, but now I'm trying to start up again. But that's besides the point. Um, I was using Clip Studio Paint a lot because I, I want to use that to end up making my comic. So I decided that all my design aspects of that would be you know, be better if I did it in Clip Studio Paint and then save it on my laptop, then do it on my iPad and then have to use Google Drive to like send it over or whatever the case is. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to use do this piece in Clip Studio Paint as well, because why not? Um, Even though I tend to like to do all my other art normally on my iPad and then save the comic stuff on Clip Studio Paint. But I was like, why not? The thing is, at the time, um, prior to me really getting down a proper way of doing things in terms of like you know kind of getting my getting um getting a style in clip studio paint that i like or that resembles what i do in procreate i was working on this piece so i kind of half asked the coloring aspect of this and i was just going to kind of leave it the way it was and in, in, in terms of like what i was doing at clip studio paint i was like okay that's done um, since this is giving like Halloween vibes because of the skull and stuff, I was going to save the piece for October and not post it back in July when I originally worked on the piece. Fast forward to October, I was like, you know what? Okay, it's already coming up into the middle of October. I really need to put something out here because I would like to at least done one video possibly each on both channels for the month of October. I looked at the piece and I absolutely hated it. I was looking at it. I was like, what the heck is going on? I don't like this at all. So I was like, okay, I'm going to bring it into Procreate and I'm going to figure out how to kind of make it presentable to what I like. The thing is, I should have went back into Clip Studio Paint, save it as a PSD so I can bring it into Procreate and work on it a little bit easier because I'm the type of person who loves to work in layers I didn't do that. I just rendered on top of it. So it was a little bit hard because there were parts that weren't even shaded properly because, you know, they were like harsh lines that I didn't even blend out. So I had to like go in and blend out those those lines because I don't I, I don't I, I do incorporate harsh lines. Overall, I feel like my art kind of is more soft. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I had to go in and blend those out, but then because everything was on one layer, when I was blending something out, stuff like the lace undershirt part of the design with like those like lines that go across to kind of emulate that like that fishnet type vibe, those parts would then get blended out, obviously. So then I had to then go in and then re-put those lines back on top. So it was like I was doing the shading process, which is usually underneath the line art or underneath the sketching and then I was doing the overpainting process which is usually above everything I was like all in one layer this is why I absolutely hate doing stuff on one layer I commend people who could do things on one layer I cannot anyways that's what I'll say with the process that's like you know something different that I had to do um that I don't normally normally do um I don't like the bottom half of the piece I absolutely hate it um, I did duplicate this piece on Procreate and then crop it, but then it ended up just being a really long horizontal, like, canvas after I finished it, and I don't think that would do good in terms of, like, posting. I don't think that would work well. I'll figure it out, but I don't really like the bottom half of the piece, but other than that, I think that's it, so I will, um, yeah, I will, uh, tell you guys a little bit of the backstory that I created for this character, because I thought, like, why not? And then we'll get into ending the video off um, with the proper outro. Okay, now, so let's talk a little bit about who this character is and what her backstory might be. So far, all I know is that I want to name her Violent. 
Violet. Oh my god, I went to name her Violet. And yeah, that's really unoriginal, but I saw the purple hair and I was just kind of like, that's just what came to mind. Um, and yeah, so yeah, her name's unoriginal and her story is also going to be unoriginal either. Um, I don't know what character the story might be similar to because I wasn't thinking of a certain character and then designing her story off of that. But just because, you know, really nothing is original. So like something like this has already been done before, but I just don't know where. But essentially, um, in a small town where I would want, first of all, in the broader world, I assume, or not assume, but I want magic and the supernatural to exist. But in the small town where Violet is from, magic and the supernatural doesn't exist. Maybe there aren't like residents who also, you know, do magic or residents who have supernatural abilities. And maybe also that, but like, in their surrounding area so like maybe the forest maybe some smaller villages that are around them also don't really experience magic or the supernatural and so so violet would live in the small town where magic and supernatural doesn't really exist as often as outside of the town and its surrounding areas um however violet grew up with collector parents who were fond of the supernatural so when they died while on a journey violet took over their like took over her parents a cult shop where she like relishes in it since like a very young age she has been drawn to the odd and weird world of magic and the supernatural and through this she developed you know maybe a strange fashion sense because i'm trying to just give reasons to like just why she looks like that and and you know and then she started collecting her own things which will which you'll see in like the shelves behind her um so like yeah such as you'll see like the skeleton heads um, behind her and i also think that maybe the headband that she wears had been rumored to have magical property so it's rumored to be a magical item you know that may or may not give her powers so i feel like she probably went on a journey and found that item and you know she wears it on her to give her magical abilities um yeah so while her outer appearance um, might be unconventional or scary to some people, I would think that Violet is actually like, really sweet. She's very curious, uh, maybe too curious, very passionate. She's like, so passionate to the point that she's so eager to share her stories of travel. And she's so eager to talk about her like the magical items that she has collect, you know, within her town where people are afraid of stuff like that or they wouldn't want to engage in like the type of character that she is because of the things that she she does um so yeah i don't know i feel like violet um like i feel like despite that she was still doing anyways and i think that would just make her ostracized probably even more um overall i just say that violet believes in this mysterious world around her and one day she wants to experience that same world beyond the small town that she lives in and beyond the surrounding areas um so she can experience the world that ended up killing her parents i don't know if that's some i don't know if that's weird um that you know your parents died because they kept pushing on and pushing on and pushing on to experience this world and now you want to do the same and that could result in your death but I feel like she's too passionate about and too curious about stuff like this that I don't even know if that's it's either not coming to her head that she might die or she doesn't care. I don't know. Or she probably just wants to do the same things that her parents does. And maybe she feels closer. I'm not really sure. This is I'm spitballing here. But yeah, that that's Violet. <laughs> and that's that's just what that's a whole backstory I came up came up with her with came up with her with came up what that's the backstory i came up with for her yeah um and who knows if i'll ever draw a violet again i think her her name is pending but that's what i have um so yeah that is the backstory of my character violet but i don't know i think the video is like okay i just was trying to rush something out because you know i wanted to at least do a video for the halloween horror october season so yeah anyways thank you guys so much for watching it definitely means a lot jen and i will see you in another video hopefully uh stay safe stay warm peace bye guys